Hello, dear students. We are back again with the third portion of the lesson, the last lesson. In the first two, we have already discussed what happened when little France was late to school and the uh, situation which was uh, prevalent there around the school, how people gathered there, the old man, uh, the old uh, people like the old Hauser, the former mayor and several others were occupying or sitting in the back benches of the classroom. Okay, so it was an unusual atmosphere. So from there, I will begin uh, the uh, next, next portion, next part of the story. So while then little friends goes on to describe the father developments or the incidents of uh, of the day while i was thinking of all this i heard my name called then little friends heard his name was called by the teacher m hamel it was my turn to recite what would I not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the participle all true? Very loud and clear and without one mistake. So it was a very desperate sort of situation for little friends because he was not prepared with uh, his assignment. Mr. Hamill had told him, told, in fact he had told all the students to be prepared with the rules of the participles but little Franz failed to remember those rules simply because he didn't give any uh, importance to uh, to those uh, rules or he did not concentrate on learning those rules of participles so evidently quite clearly he was not prepared with the rules of participles and uh, he was so much stance that uh, he would have perhaps he would have done anything okay to avoid uh, reciting those rules of participles so the rule of participle was quite dreadful dreadful means scary okay scary something which is very frightening something which is very dreadful or something which is uh, which is very frightening you get afraid of it okay the rule for the participle was something uh, France was really afraid of France was really scared of because he didn't know even a single thing about the rules of participles so he had to recite the rules of participles all through very loud and clear without one mistake so as his name was called he was supposed to recite the rules of participles without a single mistake he had to do it in a loud and clear way so uh, what he could do now because he was not prepared but I got mixed up on the first words and stood there but little Franz got mixed up he got confused on the first words and stood there he kept standing there he could not carry on the task he could not uh, recite those rules of participles because he was not prepared he was not ready with the rules of participles holding on to my desk he kept on holding to his desk then his heart beating my heart beating his heart kept beating and not daring to look up and he could not dare look up he didn't have the courage to look up and not daring look up means actually not having the courage not having uh, the guts to look up he was very scared he was afraid he thought that he would get a good scolding from mr hamel his teacher so he kept on standing there he continued to stand there uh, unable to recite the rules of participles his heart was beating and he didn't have the courage to look up. I heard M. Hamel say to me, I won't scold you, little Franz. You must feel bad enough. Then Mr. Hamel told him that uh, he won't scold him. Uh, it 
was a, it was a uh, very difficult situation for for little Franz. And Mr. Hamel told that he won't he won't he won't scold him. He won't scold little Franz, but he told Franz that he should feel bad enough for being unable to recite the rules of participles. See how it is. Every day we have said to ourselves, Bah, I have plenty of time. He said it every day. We just keep telling us that uh, we have plenty of time. I will learn it tomorrow. And we simply just put off our work for the next day, for tomorrow, for the next day. We don't do it on time. We don't do it uh, properly. We are not punctual. We don't understand the value of time. And now you see where we have come out. Ah, that's the great trouble with Alsa. So that's the great trouble with Alsace. See where we have come out. Then M. Hamel, the teacher, told that just because of the tendency of the people of Alsace to just put up their things, put up their assignments, their works, their study and everything, for the next day, the situation has become so bad. In fact, the situation has gone from bad to worse. So our Ah, that's the great trouble with Alsace. So it is the trouble with Alsace. She puts off learning till tomorrow. She keeps on. The people of Alsace, they simply put off their learning till the next day. Now, those fellows out there will have the right to say to you, now those people who will come over here, they will tell you how it how is it you pretend to be Frenchman and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language? And the people out there, in fact, uh, from the very next day, the German language was to be taught instead of France, instead of the French language. So the people who would come over there to teach them, who would come over there, or in fact, the Prussians the, or the Germans, they would just... Uh, criticize people like little France, telling them that you pretend to be a Frenchman but you can neither speak your language nor you can write your language properly. So how, how it is, you should really feel bad because you have never attempted, you have never tried to learn your language properly. So, But you are not the worst poor little France. We, are, we have all a great deal to repose ourselves with. So you are not the worst, the little France. You are not the worst. You are not the only person to be blamed. We have all a great deal to repose ourselves with. We all have to, we all are responsible for this condition. We are all responsible for this uh, pathetic situation. We have to repose ourselves. We have to criticize ourselves. We have to repose, we have to just repel, or we have to criticize. Repose here means to actually criticize or uh, just uh, reflect in a, in a quite uh, introspective way, in a quite contemplative way. We have to criticize ourselves. It is not only uh, you, but all the people who are responsible for this, for this pathetic situation. Your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn. Then Mr. Hamel went on to say that uh, the parents, the parents of little France or the parents of the children, they were not anxious. Anxious actually means uh, a person who is really scared or really afraid of the future, afraid what would happen. But here it exactly means uh, keen or eager okay so here it means your parents were not anxious that means your parents were not keen your parents were not eager your parents were not interested enough to have you learn so your parents didn't want you to learn they were not interested in learning they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mills they rather wanted you 
to work on a farm or at the mills so as to have a little more money. They, in fact, they wanted to earn money through you. They wanted money instead of knowledge. So they preferred, they preferred to have you work there on a farm or at the mills so that you could earn a little money to help the family to, to actually survive, okay? But knowledge was, or learning was quite secondary. And I, and as far as I'm concerned, I have been to blame also. And Hamel also put the blame on himself. He put the blame on himself as well. Have I not often sent you to water my flowers? Have I not sent you to just water my flowers? Mr. Hamill sent his uh, students to water the flowers in the garden. Instead of learning your lessons, instead of learning the lessons, he sent the children to water the flowers. So he was also to some extent responsible for that bad condition or situation because sometimes that uh, affected or hampered the study of those uh, students. So, and then he said, and when I wanted to go fishing, did I not just give you a holiday? So, when he went, wanted to go for fishing, then he also, sometimes, then he also gave a holiday. Sometimes he used to give a holiday. He used to declare a holiday for the students. So, he was also, to some extent, responsible for that pathetic condition. So, M. Hamill... Uh, also put the blame on himself, not only the parents or the guardians of the, of the students, of his students, but on himself as well. Then from one thing to another, M. Hamill went on to talk of the French language, saying it, saying that it was the most beautiful, beautiful language in the world. Then Mr. Hamill just went on to talk about one thing or the other, and then he uh, went on to talk of the French language. He described, rather, he uh, mentioned that it was the most beautiful language. He went on to say that France uh, was the most beautiful language in the world. It, it is the clearest, the most logical. Logical means reasonable. That we must guard it among us and never forget it. Then he said that it is really um, a very clear language, in fact, the clearest of the lot. Then it is the most reasonable, most logical. And as Frenchmen, they had to guard their language, they had to protect their language and never forget their language. He was getting really emotional on that day because from the very next day, he would be unable to teach French language and he would have to leave that school. So he was getting really emotional on that day. And he was trying to, he was trying his best to grab the attention of everyone. Because when a people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they had the key to their prison. Then Mr. Hamill went on to say that when people are enslaved, when the people are made slaves, when a person is made a slave, as long as he hold fast, as long as he says hold on to his language strongly, then it is just like a key to their prison. That means their language, the French language, would be the key for them to uh, free themselves, to rescue themselves from prison. It was just like a situation when, the, uh, when France was defeated in the Franco-Prussian War, okay, they were about to be enslaved from the, because from the very next day, German language would be taught in, the, in those provinces of Alsace and Lorraine in France. So, the people had to remain passionate about their language because their language would ultimately provide them freedom. Their language is their identity. Their language 
is their key to the prison okay so mr hamel just advised them to treasure their language to save their language protect their language because ultimately their language would protect them their language would provide them uh, freedom then he opened the grammar and read us our lesson then he opened up to talking about the french language and the beauty of the language then he opened the grammar book and read us our lesson then he read a lesson from the grammar book i was amazed to see how well i understood it little france was really amazed he was amazed means surprised he was surprised he was really astonished he was taken aback that he could understand so clearly all he said seemed so easy so easy it appeared that everything mr hamel explained was really very easy he understood everything i think too that means he thought also that he i had never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience little franz felt as if uh, little franz felt that uh, he had never listened so carefully and perhaps mr hamel also never explained uh, everything with that much of patience so that day was really different from the other days dear students uh, because on that day the atmosphere was different the environment was completely different and mr hamel was getting really emotional because on the very next day he would uh, he would be unable to uh, teach the french language okay he would have to leave the place and uh, so he was perhaps he was just uh, teaching more passionately on that on that day but uh on the top of that we also have to understand that little franz was also very emotional on that day he was really very passionate about his language so unlike the other days when he did not used to concentrate in the class on that day he concentrated he was more attentive he listened very carefully very patiently so he understood everything he understood whatever mr hamel said and that uh it seemed almost as if the poor man as if the poor man wanted to give us all he knew before going away and to put it all into our heads at one stroke so it seemed almost like uh, the poor man that is mr hamel he wanted to give us everything he knew whatever he knew whatever knowledge he had he wanted to give everything to us okay everything to little franz and his classmates and uh, everybody who were present there and put it all into our heads in at one stroke and at one stroke at and at one attempt and in one attempt he wanted to put all the knowledge into the heads of those people so mr hamel was really passionate all the people were also very passionate so everybody concentrated on that day everyone was attentive and mr hamel attempted or he tried to uh, put in everything he knew into the heads of the people so the situation was really extraordinary unlike the other days then uh, after that after the grammar we had a lesson in writing after that they had a lesson in writing they had to write something that day mr hamel m hamel had the new copies for us written in a beautiful round hand franz alsas franz alsas so he had uh, they had a lesson in writing that day mr hamel brought some copies for them and uh, beautifully written on those copies was franz alsas franz alsas so those words were written Okay, Alsace was a was a province of France, so those names were written France, Alsace, France, Alsace, as they belong to Alsace. They look like little flags floating everywhere in the school room, so they appeared just like flags, little flags, 
floating there. Okay, flying there in the in the school room. Okay, hung from the rod at the top of our desk. So those little copies, little little pieces of paper, they they were hung on the rod at the top of our desk. On the top of the desk, those uh, little little uh, pieces of paper were put, and they were flying just like the they were floating just like the flags, little flags. You ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was. That means little Franz says that one, one should just, uh, one should just watch that sort of a situation to believe how quiet, how still, how silent the atmosphere was. Everyone was attentive. Everyone concentrated on their work, and the situation was really very quiet. The atmosphere was really very quiet. Everyone was busy working and they simply were attentive. So the only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper. The only sound was when uh, when the students, when the children were writing on the paper. It was the sound of the scratching of the pen on the paper. It was the sound of their writing. And it was really very quiet. The only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper. Once some beetles flew in, once some insects, beetles flew in, but nobody paid any attention to them. But nobody looked at them. Not even the littlest ones. Not even the littlest of the children. They did not even look at those beetles or the insects. They were just attentive on that given day. They just kept on studying, they kept on doing what was given to them. So they simply just uh, uh, ignored those beetles or the insects that flew in. Okay. Uh, then not even the littlest ones who worked right on tracing their fish hooks as if it was friends too. And even the littlest ones, they were tracing their fish hooks, they were drawing fish hooks, they were tracing as if it was also French, as if it was also French language. So everyone was working very, very attentively. They did not even look any, anything that could cause some sort of a distraction. So all the people were feeling sad. They were emotional that from the very next day, they won't be able to learn the French language. Most of them, uh, had hardly thought about their language, tried to learn their language properly. But on that day, they realized the importance of the French language. So they were very attentive. They were very passionate. So nothing could distract them. Nothing could divert their attention from, their, from the class. So on the roof, the pigeons, on the roof, the pigeons, Good, very low, and I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? Then on the roof, the pigeons could very low. The pigeons were also producing a very low noise. And I thought to myself, and little Franz thought to himself, he became contemplative, he thought, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? Will these uh, people will the Germans, because they have won a decisive battle against against the Frenchmen. So will they force them to sing in German, even the pigeons? Because they will obviously force the people in Alsace and Lorraine, because all these two provinces or the territories of France has been have been invaded by uh, Germany. But will these Germans be able to force the pigeons to sing in German. Okay, so oh, he was getting really passionate about this. He was getting really very emotional that uh, he was going to lose his language. The people of France were going to lose the language. So uh, whether it meant whether that uh, forced the physical uh, force or the violence of the Germans would be able to crush their spirits, crush the spirits of the friends. Okay, 
they will definitely bully them. The Germans would definitely bully the French, uh, France, uh, to just uh, submit to their to their domination. But will they be able to defeat their spirits? Will they be able to cross their spirits? Okay, then whenever I looked up from my writing, I saw M. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another. Whenever little Franz raised his head, okay, whenever he looked up from his writing, he saw Mr. Hamel just uh, sitting motionless. Motionless means without movement. Dear students, motion means uh, movement. Motion less means movement less. That means without any movement. So he was sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at the other, then at another. So he was gazing at something. He was evidently very passionate and then he was gazing at something or at another. As if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little school room. So it appeared as if Mr. Hamill wanted to fix in his mind how everything looked in that classroom, what it was like in the room, because on the very next day he would be no more in that room. He would be no more teaching friends there from the very next day because German language would be taught and a new teacher would arrive on the next day. So he was just trying to instill the image of the classroom. He wanted to just put in the picture of the classroom in his mind so that he would be able to uh, preserve it he would be able to treasure it in his in his uh, in his heart for the for the rest of his life okay fancy fancy means imagine here it means imagine just imagine for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him so it's been a story for 40 years he had been teaching the forest span of 40 years in the same place and he had his garden outside his window and his class in front of him he had been teaching the students he had been teaching the children for a period of 40 years and uh, he had been doing that and he always had the picture of his garden right in right outside the window and he had the picture of the classroom right in front of him just like that just like that on that day so he wanted to preserve that picture of his classroom so he was looking at one thing or the other okay uh, in this segment in this portion of the lesson i'll stop here and we have one more section coming up and in that one i will uh, finish off the lesson it will be the last portion so stay tuned for that okay thank you dear students hope you have understood the explanation of this portion thank you